Well, pond scum just, that sounds kind of disgusting. Let's go with the scientific name, algae. Algae is the original oil source. The majority of the fossil fuels that are powering the world right now are not just decomposed old dinosaur sludge like many people think. By and large, they come from prehistoric algae. Trouble is, the process that turns algae into usable oil takes millions of years, and the world is using up that gift from prehistoric algae much faster than it can be replaced naturally. Scientists are trying to speed up that process by mass-producing algal cells and then somehow stimulating them to make oil, which will then be used to make our cars go and our planes fly. In San Francisco, old college buddies Harrison Dillon and Jonathan Wolfson have, like their algae, built a lot out of very little. Their company, Solozyme, has genetically modified different strains of algae to make different kinds of oil. They were the first company in the world to make jet fuel out of algae. What we do is we actually feed the algae biomass. For example, this is biodiesel waste glycerol. This is filthy material that would be tossed as chemical waste. And the algae take these materials and very efficiently convert them into oil. Once the algae is chock full of oil, Wolfson and Dillon use standard plant oil extraction equipment to get the oil out of the cells. And incredibly, they're getting a lot of it. These are 55 gallon barrels of algal oil. This is the largest amount of oil from algae for biofuels that's been created ever. But does the fuel work? This is a completely unmodified, off-the-showroom floor diesel vehicle. And that's a very important strategy of our company, is to make fuels that can go right into existing vehicles. Not only can algal oil power cars, but it can actually power people. We use our algae process to produce a very high-quality edible oil. It's, uh, full of uh, you know, high-value uh, nutrients. A lot of the world's population gets a lot of their daily caloric intake from cooking oils, and the price of those have tripled in the last few years. This is food that's prepared uh, with no butter, no eggs, uh, no fats, but there is algae in there. They made my birthday cake this year with algae. It was delicious. Meanwhile, deep in the heart of Texas oil country, Valsant Products is also in the thick of the oil-making algae industry. Company CEO Glenn Kurtz wouldn't have it any other way. He doesn't just eat his algae, he drinks it, straight up. On the mad scientist scale, I'm probably 9.5 out of a 10. While Solozyme grows their algae in the dark, Valsant uses natural sunlight to get their algae nice and fat with oil. But the problem with growing algae naturally in a pond is that only a thin layer on top would get enough sunlight. But that's where Valsant's revolutionary high-density vertical bioreactor comes in, which allows them to grow a lot more algae in a lot less space. This is the algae bioreactor. We have these flexible sheets that have fluid running through them. In that fluid reside the individual algae cells, and it's constantly flowing and moving. And the idea here is to expose the individual cells to as much sunlight as necessary for them to carry out photosynthesis. Not only does going vertical give the algae much more exposure to the sun, but also allows Kurtz and his team far more control than they'd have in just some random body of water. One, we're not losing water to evaporation. Two, we don't have cross-contamination from other algal species. And three, we're able to control temperature, pH, nutrient sources much better than we could in an open pond. It gives us much higher yield, ultimately, and that's what we're after. We can't keep going the way we're going now with fuel. It's a finite resource. And so algae offers a solution to that. I believe in it. Cheers.